Welcome to our Roper School Martin Luther King Jr. Ceremony and Program. We wish peace and comfort to all of us who have suffered the loss of family and friends this past year. We would also like to open our program with an inclusive acknowledgement of people and place. To recognize the land is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those Native Americans whose territory you and I reside on. And it is a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on this land from time immemorial. Please listen to the following land acknowledgement statement that will be read by our local, our vocal teacher, Abha Deary. We acknowledge that the Roper School rests on the ancestral and contemporary homeland of the Anishinaabek, or Three Fires Confederacy. The 1807 Treaty of Detroit recognized these lands as belonging to the Ojibwe, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Wyandotte nations. We at Roper affirm the inherent sovereignty of tribal governments and thank them for their stewardship of this land in the past, present, and future. With our native neighbors, Roper will work to advance educational equity and promote a better future for the earth and all people. Thank you, Apa. Today is a day of celebration and recognition of the of the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There have been various versions of this event throughout our Roper's history. A student-led model that we follow today of the MLK Vigil started uh, being held on the Bloomfield Hills campus in the early 80s. In 1986, Roper Sr. Jimmy Spencer was motivated to have a school-wide event that celebrated the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Jimmy's idea was to walk through the campus, starting at the Hill House steps, walk around the back part of the campus middle building where Jimmy and others spoke, and then they walked in silence to the Martin Luther King Jr. domes, singing, We Shall Overcome. The event ended by the blowing out of candles. Jimmy remembers that it was a very cold and very still night, and yet it was a beautiful way to end the evening, and that was Jimmy's idea. Over the years, our program has included having students and adults from our community giving speeches, singing songs, doing forensics pieces, reciting poetry, and a number of other things. Some of these same activities you have experienced earlier today in workshops, facilitated by our own Roper students, parents, and other community members. This year, we have chosen to give homage to a work of Dr. King by quoting Congressman John Lewis. John Robert Lewis was an American statesman and civil rights activist who served in the United States House of Representatives for Georgia's 5th Congressional District from 1987 until his death in 2020. He was the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee from 1963 to 1966. He was known for leading some 600 protesters and the Bloody Sunday March across the Edward Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in 1965. His words seem most appropriate for today and this time, so I quote, Speak up. Speak out. Get in the way. Get in good trouble, necessary trouble, and redeem the soul of America. This call to action reminds us that each one of us can do something to continue to contribute to uh, justice for all people. Now we're moving to our ceremony by uh, uh, introducing our master ceremonies, which is our singer class member, Ty Fowler. Please welcome Ty to the platform. Enjoy the evening and our program. Welcome to our virtual Martin Luther King Jr. Candlelight Ceremony and Program. My name is Ty Fowler. This is my seventh year at the Roper School and I am currently a senior. As one of the co-presidents of the Student Diversity Advisory Committee and a member of the Black Student Union, this event means so much to me and I am truly honored to be the Master of Ceremonies for this year's celebration. This celebratory event has grown and changed throughout the years, but our goal remains the same, to remind us that the hopes and dreams of Dr. King the dreams of our founders and the dreams of those who have followed them still need our work in order to become a reality. To challenge and inspire us to be the people we know we should be, tolerant yet principled, accepting but not apathetic, full of zeal but not full of hatred. To recommit to becoming better people so we can build a better society, 
and to speak up and to speak out about injustices wherever we see these in existence. We now invite our head of school, David Fellman, to offer his welcome address. Good evening, and welcome to our celebration of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In 1955, Dr. King spoke to an audience gathered at church in Montgomery, Alabama. The arrest of Rosa Parks and the soon to begin bus boycott brought the, brought the group together to listen to this little known minister. In a speech that would launch his career in the civil rights movement, the young preacher framed his call to action, not through the gospel of religious guidance, but instead calling on the assembled audience members to take heed of the founding documents of our country, reminding us of the inconsistencies of practice being experienced in our nation because of race. King spoke of the need for integrity in our country's practices, that the United States itself has a framework that must work for all of its citizens. The guidance of the Constitution and the decisions of the Supreme Court are meant to uphold teachings of liberty and justice for all. And when there is a lack of clarity, when there is inconsistency, when there is injustice, we are called upon to point out the issues and to act. We act not because of a sense of privilege or a promise from a divine presence. We act only to hold each other accountable to the promises we have made to one another within the social contract we formed as a nation. The moral integrity of our country rests in our ability to live up to the guiding documents that formed our union. We cannot rest as bystanders or accept the inconsistent practices of choosing to only live some of our founding principles. Speaking of the intention to boycott Montgomery buses and to lead protests, Dr. King said, We are not wrong. We are not wrong in what we are doing. If we are wrong, the Supreme Court of this nation is wrong. If we are wrong, the Constitution of the United States is wrong. And if we are wrong, God Almighty is wrong. If we are wrong, Jesus of Nazareth was merely a utopian dreamer that never came down to earth. If we are wrong, Justice is a lie, love has no meaning, and we are determined here in Montgomery to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. In the 67 years that have passed since Dr. King's speech, we continue to find ourselves pressing his call for equity, seeking the path that has our country live its core values for all of its citizens. The right to peacefully assemble, the right to vote, the right to a fair trial, the right to be safe in one's home, or on the street, or even in one's car, are basic standards of justice that all Americans should be able to possess. All of these human rights require that we live our core documents and that justice guide our practices and our actions. It was the late Congressman John Lewis who, like Dr. King, reminded us of our obligation when justice is dispensed without equity and our rights as citizens are threatened. Congressman Lewis said that it is incumbent on each of us to speak up, speak out, and get in the way, get in good trouble, necessary trouble, and help redeem the soul of America. The health of our American soul needs the tending of each of us. The moral pandemic we face calls on each person to engage civically. Dr. King and Congressman Lewis shine a bright light on the hypocrisy where our practices don't match our stated intentions and challenge every citizen to hold ourselves and our leaders accountable. We know that our country, we know that, that the country we have need not continue to be a place that inconsistently lives its core values. That with a little good trouble, we can hold one another accountable to the founding words that say this is a land of liberty and justice for all. Together, we can ensure the right to safety, dignity, and belonging, and ultimately heal the soul of our country. Only then can we truly be a nation that thrives. Happy birthday, Dr. King. Thank you, David. We appreciate your words of inspiration. 
Our first performance of the evening is an integration of dance and music. It is a collaborative work performed by the middle and upper school choir and dancers arranged by Birmingham campus music teacher Abha Deering and our dance teacher Amy Copa who teaches at both Birmingham and the Bloomfield Hills campuses. They call this performance Lovely Day. Lovely Day was written in 1977 by Bill Withers and Skip Scarborough, both black American singer-songwriters. This song speaks to the resilience and optimism that has helped to sustain the civil rights movement in the United States and is also an uplifting song that inspires hope.
We appreciate the commitment that our board has made to the work of diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. During the past year, the board has formed a DEIJ standing committee and adopted an anti-racist resolution. These actions affirm the board's leadership role in this ongoing community work. You will now hear from our board chair, Clay Thomas. Hello, my name is Clay Thomas. I am the chair of the Roper Board of Trustees and the parent of three Roper upper schoolers. Thank you, Carolyn and Ty, for giving me the opportunity to participate in this most important Roper event celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I am honored to be with you this evening. As part of the Board of Trustees, one of our most important responsibilities is to protect and support the mission and philosophy of the school. Indeed, it is the mission and philosophy that brought many of us to this community in the first place. As you read about and understand the school's foundation, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice are very much a part of who we are. However, we must also realize that even though it is a part of our foundation, we still have much work to do. In order to be truly who we say we are, we must continually prioritize diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice in everything we do. For the board's part, we have a DEIJ committee whose members sit on all of the board's committees to ensure that all discussions and decisions are viewed through a DEIJ lens. We have also recently passed an anti-racism resolution that is an important statement about the board's focus and expectations for the school. This is really just the beginning though, because we must encourage all parts of our community to embrace our differences and lift each other's voices. To get where we need to be, we must expand DEIJ work so that it touches all members of our community, rather than only a particular group or committee. As a board, we are committed to making a lasting impact on the Roper community by working to ensure that diversity, equity, and inclusion and justice are priorities in all facets of our community. Again, thank you, Carolyn and Ty, for this great event. I look forward to continuing this work together. Next on our program will be a performance by our lower, middle, and upper school dancers, as well as an original poem written by a Roper freshman, Asaja Allen. The text reminds us of Dr. King's call to unite in our community while in the fight against racial inequity. Embodying this solidarity, the stage four, middle, and upper school dance ensemble performed a Sister Sledge's anthem, We Are Family, written by Nile Rogers and Bernard Edwards. This performance under the direction of Amy Koba is inspired by Dr. King's work as an advocate of global solidarity and strives to inspire our Roper community, citizens of the world, to work together towards racial justice. Strive for unity. Together we are stronger. Rough roads and tall mountains won't keep us much longer. Ominous futures that could be prevented. Never say our voices can't be lifted. Growing larger each day. Every one of us has something important to say. Rumbling louder with our voices combined. Arts speak for themselves dance, music, and murals of all kinds, spirit defined. Anything you do can be shared with whatever community you have there. Call out for your friends, our support. MLK Day is not just for one. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, unrecognized leaders who have done their best. Not everyone is talked about how they should be. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. To get together and make sure to take care, you all have a purpose and a gift to give. Our unity provides safety and a change to live.
Another long-standing tradition of this evening is to have members of our senior class speak at this ceremony. Tonight, we are honored to have senior co-presidents, who happen to be twin brothers, Christopher and Andrew Maharis, sharing in this role. We warmly welcome them to share their reflections of the importance of this celebration. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to everyone who's made tonight possible. We want to give a huge thank you to Carolyn Lett for helping organize and oversee tonight's event. And also thank you, Tari Helmer and Anthony Morrow for filming, editing, and bringing everything together. We also want to thank Ty Fowler for emceeing tonight, as well as all of the wonderful people making up today's program and everyone tuning in. You all make tonight invaluably important and impactful. Tonight is not only a night of celebration, but also a moment to remind ourselves of our continuous call to action. We talk about a fight for justice. This fight can take many forms, but in the end, no fight is won through complacency. Tonight is specifically focused on combating complacency and getting into good trouble. Everyone participating today is here because we know that there are injustices in our lives, in our world, and in our communities, and we wanna join in that fight and push for change. Roper gives us opportunities and pathways to harness our own initiatives. The continuation of tonight's annual MLK Day celebration is one of the many examples of the Roper community coming together to cultivate empathy and promote equity and justice. Having been at Roper since stage one, these opportunities were always abundant and natural. In stage two, I remember helping create a path for the final portion of the candlelight walk, ending in the Martin Luther King Jr. domes. And growing up with Roper past elementary school, middle school, and into our senior year of high school, uh, the Roper philosophy has been a palpable and guiding force. We saw the philosophy in action last year during the raising of the Black Lives Matter flag. Having Roper as an institution take a visible and public stand against racial injustice was extremely important to me and many members of the Roper community as we could physically see this action of solidarity. And I think what's also really important is that this was a student-driven event. Members of our Black Student Union saw injustice, proactively created this initiative, and pushed for that initiative to be recognized and followed through at an institutional level. Many large-scale community events and actions are born from similar pathways. An individual or a group of individuals recognize and feel a problem, come up with a solution, and then take strides to make that solution large-scale and more widely impactful. This is why individual action and initiative is so important, why it's imperative for us as individuals to be continually cognizant and proactive in our fight for justice and against complacency. A few weeks ago, the tragedy at Oxford left members inside and outside of the Roper community with intense feelings of loss, fear, and anxiety. Andrew and I, among other students, felt an, in un felt an initiative to help relieve those feelings and do something to help. With empathy as our backbone, we were able to quickly turn that initiative into action, encouraging students to show support for Oxford by wearing blue and gold and distributing bags of blue and gold pins and hot chocolate to homerooms. Roper's continual support amplified our efforts and allowed our individual initiatives to efficiently and effectively evolve into meaningful communal action. The support and empowering force of Roper has also provided us with opportunities to become involved in various affinity and alliance groups, especially in cultivating a stronger and better represented Asian community within Roper. Through co-founding the Alliance Group, the Asian Culture Club, helping organize and carry out celebrations for Diwali, and in planning events and activities for the upcoming Lunar New Year, we've realized just how much Roper has empowered us to do, and just how important seizing that opportunity is. However, we're seniors, and as we prepare for our final semester, we're also preparing for how to find and create other outlets for our initiatives. Once we do graduate with the rest of our class, it's reassuring to know that new leaders will fill the roles that us and our classmates have taken on. As we leave you for the night, we urge you to continually ask yourself, do I have an initiative? What's my call to action? There are opportunities to create change everywhere, but it first takes individual action to prompt communal responses. Thank you all again for your participation in tonight's program. We hope you're truly able to take something away from this and that you really enjoy the rest of your night. Christopher and Andrew, thank you for your heartfelt expressions. 
Our final performance of the evening will be a song performed by the middle and upper school choir and dancers. They join forces once again to remind us that through all the struggles and joys of life, we are all connected. Connected is a song composed by a Canadian contemporary, Brian Tate. This composition draws on music from many cultures, but especially gospel music and music of the African diaspora. That's what I said, I am you, Army. Don't you see? I am you, Army. That's what I said, I am you, Army. Don't you see? I am you, Army. That's what I said, I am you, Army. Don't you see? I'm over here, and you're over there. There's something between. Thank you all. Last but certainly not least, we ask our own Emery Pence to lead us to the candlelight ceremony with concluding remarks. If there has been one overarching theme for my speeches on this occasion over the last 25 years, it has been that this event should be more than a celebration of past struggles and victories. It should be a time to recommit to justice and continue the fight, a call to action. This year, I'm here to do so again, now with an urgency bordering on desperation and panic, for we are faced with not just a slow march up to Dr. King's mountaintop, but with an avalanche threatening our nation's long, difficult, imperfect experiment with democracy and our extension of it towards all people. Some of us longed for a time of clear choice when the battle lines were clear and the danger stark, when a person knew what needed to be done. Rejoice, for the time of clarity is here. With autocracies around the world increasing, 
white supremacy and fascism here at home flourishing, voter suppression laws going into effect, physical intimidation and violence directed at our election officials and voters, state legislatures angling to overthrow the will of the voters, and demagogues using lies and phony wedge issues to manipulate the masses of scared, angry people. Who needs 1954 when you have 2022? If something doesn't change, if you and I don't do anything, the next two elections may be the last true and free elections we have. Remember, Hitler was placed in power legally and democratically in 1932, and that was the end of true and free elections until 1945. Hitler was laughed at and underestimated in the 1920s and early 30s, as the right-wing loonies are laughed at now. I, re I recommend you read the January-February Atlantic Magazine issue, January 6th was practice, especially the article, Are We Doomed? Am I confident that those who believe in democracy, justice, and the rule of law are going to wake up? No, I am not, and I'm going to tell you why. But first, I have another recommendation. Please watch the movie, Don't Look Up, that doesn't seem as much of a satire as a documentary. In it, two astronomers discover a huge asteroid on course to hit Earth in six months, and it will wipe out all life. Political partisanship, greed, personal short-sightedness, celebrity culture obsession, lack of leadership, and inequality of power all combine to prevent humanity from taking the actions to save ourselves. The film was intended to be an allegory on how we are responding to climate change disaster, but is also a fair take on how we have done with COVID. And I contend it applies to what is happening right now before our eyes with our democracy. But it isn't just our leaders and our macro culture that will lose our democracy. It is us as individuals who are complacent in that we won the election battles in 2018 and 2020, thus relaxing. It is we who have personal worries and joys to keep us distracted, and we who suffer from a lack of imagination to envision where this is obviously headed. Folks, the fascist comet is headed straight for you, and it's time to wake up before it's too late. For you who are disillusioned with how heaven wasn't established immediately with the 2020 election, Grow up and realize the battle is long and hard. And if you want to get better law and better lawmakers elected, then it is up to you. Just scorning those who have political power, who are trying their best, but are not conjuring up miracles that we want, is not the answer. How does the average person rise above the din of misinformation and the distractions of daily life to keep their eyes on the prize? I have a few recommendations. One, inform yourself. A bit more structured time reading and studying to prepare for battle is crucial. Learn about local school boards and election officials. Worry about your state legislature. Two, carve out definite times of your day to get involved. Don't leave it as an afterthought like my approach to daily exercise. Take the first steps to overcome inertia. Three, Join an organization only with the support of others and the structure and synergy of a group will we be able to accomplish anything. Don't tell yourself you are weak and powerless. Tell yourself you are part of a mighty army. Four, talk to others, not those already lost to the madness of believing QAnon craziness. Engage people, ask them questions, encourage them to get informed and get involved. Don't buy and be embarrassed by seeming to be a little or a lot alarmed. Five, motivate yourself by asking yourself and others, what kind of world do you want to live in? More importantly, what kind of world do you want to leave for your children? How can we work on essential problems like very real climate disaster if we have a right-wing fascist government? Will democracy die on your watch? A woman supposedly asked Ben Franklin coming out of the Constitutional Convention, what kind of government we now had. His answer, Madam, a republic 
a republic if you can keep it. We won't keep it until we rise up now. This leads me to my last two questions. What have you done in the last year to stop voter suppression and attacks on elections? Think about it right now. What have you done? What will you do in the next year to preserve our democracy? Like it or not, comforting or scary, in your consciousness or not, the fascist comet is coming for you, for us all. Okay, let's take a communal breath, for we need to pace ourselves for the difficult work we all have to do. Now I'd like to introduce Roper's Head of Development and my friend, Danita Bank Sims. Thank you and good evening. In order for a dream to live and a light to endure, someone has to care for it and pass it along. Our gesture of pride and continuing purpose includes caring for this vital flame as we pause to celebrate the life of Dr. King. We are deeply grateful that your choice to honor him on this national holiday of celebration includes the Roper School. I suspect that you, like me, welcome the annual reminder of the beliefs and principles that are an aspiration, but somehow seem more attainable when others join me. The commitment to his principles feels so connected when we were all together. No person nurtured and sustained Dr. King's light more than Coretta Scott King. She so clearly cherished what they built together and his singular impact on all our lives. Mrs. King knew what would be required of so many, and her tireless care even reached the Roper School. Among the thoughtful treasures of note in the Roper archives is a lovely letter sent from Coretta Scott King to Anna Marie Roper. Just imagining the correspondence between these remarkable pioneers exacts a significant degree of awe. In 1970, Mrs. King wrote to thank the Roper community for designating and renaming the domes in honor of her husband. The event was a significant milestone for the school and was held on a Sunday afternoon in late May. At the time, Curtis Scott was a rising senior at Roper. He is now a proud Roper alumnus from the class of 71. He delivered the dedication remarks on behalf of the school. On that day, he noted, some of us expect this dedication of the Martin Luther King Jr. domes to serve as a progressive, liberal token to show off in the Birmingham Bloomfield area. Others expect the blacks in Detroit to see that by what we've done, we're with them. If these are our expectations, we should all go home right now and merely send our contributions to the SCLC, NAACP, SNCC, etc. To some people, our dedication will seem to be a token gesture. To a very few blacks, it might be a very nice ray of hope. However, the dedication of these domes to Martin Luther King Jr. will not smooth over the countless wounds suffered by black Americans. In short, it will have no effect on the race problem, positive or negative. As a member of the Roper community, I feel that our main aim in this dedication is not to make a presentation of sentiment to any group of people. Our aim is to honor and keep alive the memory of a great and sincere man. Curtis concluded, Dr. King's philosophy of peace, equality, and brotherhood parallels that of the Roper School and his example as he fought for what he believed in reflects the courage that is necessary to live in these times of chaos. In July of that same year, Mrs. King sent a very gracious letter after she became aware of the recognition. To Anna Marie Roper, she wrote, please convey my regards to young Mr. Curtis for his very fine dedicatory speech, which he delivered on that occasion. I extend to you best wishes for your interest in mankind. Sincerely, Coretta, undersigned, Mrs. Martin Luther King, Jr. 
Mrs. King's relentless care for his light transformed Dr. King's legacy and engendered international tributes, honors, statues, a national holiday, and a national memorial. It also encompassed unmatched standards for generations to emulate. She once said, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Thanks to you, the Roper School community has demonstrated that greatness for 80 years and counting. Tonight, we invite you to preserve Dr. and Mrs. King's flame and encourage you to light your own candle in harmony and unity. We shall know. 
Shall overcome.